Hello nerds, thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom television edition for the week of June 11th, 2018. This week in TV news, we've got an update on Peter Jackson, an update on DC Universe. Uh, a lot of stuff is going on in TV, so let's jump into the intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to... Generally Nerdy. Okay, generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, we have to get into this week's sponsor. We got a new sponsor this week, not one that's really paying me yet, but it will. This one will. This one actually will, besides the t-shirts. Those pay me when you guys buy them. This week's sponsor has been brought to you by both Mercari and Poshmark. This is a very strange sponsor, you say. It's true, but uh, my girlfriend and I are selling a bunch of stuff trying to clear out our house because uh, she has collected clothes since she was probably 15 years old. So she has a lot of vintage stuff, I'm putting pictures up here, they're cycling through. Check them out. I'll leave a link to her Mercari and her Poshmark down in the description so you can go buy some of this vintage stuff. Any of you ladies out there, uh, we will be selling a couple of my things as well. So there will be guy stuff kind of nerdy stuff as you might imagine but again this episode is brought to you by both mercari and poshmark links in the description let's hit the news oh whoa, 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 whoa. before we get into the news also guys we have to do one more thing next week is denver com or this weekend rather is denver comic-con so next week we will not be doing the week in nerddom we will have how-to con videos we will have adventures in photography we will have some cosplay stuff I'm gonna try and finish getting all of my interviews edited and posted from the last conventions that we were at. Uh, the Mushroom Head episode should be going up. All kinds of stuff will still be happening, just no week in nerddom. Okay, now let's get into the news. First thing out the gate, guys, we are talking Peter Jackson. We talked a few weeks ago about the fact that he was either going to be a producer on the Amazon Lord of the Rings uh, show or he was going to take a DCEU movie. Well, uh, this week has been very interesting as far as news about that goes. First, we got an update saying that he was going to be the guy that was picking out the creative team for the show, but he was not going to be directly related to the show. That was an elaboration on something that happened about a year ago uh, when somebody said that when when it was reported that he was going to be uh, involved with it well a couple of days after that his publicist his public public publicist team he has like multiple publicists uh, they released a, an announcement that said that not only is he not at all going to be involved with Amazon's Lord of the Rings prequel but he is also not going to be associated with DCEU either. So Warner, he's not making a Warner Brothers movie that has anything to do with DC characters. Don't know what Peter Jackson's doing these days, but it's neither of those two things. Like the nerd, uh, the, the entire nerddom has been speculating for the last, oh, I don't know, year or so since Amazon announced that Lord of the Rings was going to be a series on their uh, streaming platform. So yeah, very... I, I find it amusing. I honestly, like, I was going through my sources and literally one day was one thing, the next day was the next thing, and then ever since that, uh, other sources have been announcing that Peter Jackson says he's not doing anything, guys, so stop reporting it. Yeah, it just cracked me up. Just cracked me up. <laughs> but that's all we've got for Peter. Next on the list for TV news is... Berlanti, Greg Berlanti, the guy who does the Arrowverse on Warner Brothers and Titans on the DC Universe streaming app, uh, just signed on to stay with Warner Brothers uh, slash DC until the year 2024. Now, how much he's making is 
reported a little bit differently depending on which source you're talking about. It's anywhere from 300 to 400 million dollars <laughs> to stay until 20, uh, 2024. So that's depending on which one of those is the accurate number. He's either making 50 million a year or about 80 million a year. Either way, wow, they must really be happy with that Arrowverse because, I mean, not, not that they shouldn't be, it's fantastic. All of, and, and their ability to do the crossovers and potentially the Titans crossover that we hopefully will get about two to three seasons into that Titans series just is comic book gold. This is some of the best comic book. This is easily top five best to best things to do with comic book television uh top three even just not necessarily because any of those shows are super comic book accurate because as we've talked about before they definitely have to take some liberties but just their ability to to do fan service and to to achieve greatness is so fantastic so more power to them if they're making that kind of money they can give berlanti up to 400 million dollars for the next however many years six years uh that's impressive and we just had to talk about that real quick next though is actually probably not news to a lot of people because everybody loves game of thrones but it's about game of thrones the prequel remember we talked a couple weeks ago about the fact that there were i think five different uh, spin-off ideas that George R. R. Martin had, and he had written pilot episodes for each of them, apparently, and it seems that HBO has picked up one of those five. Now, that's not to say they're not going to pick up the other four, but as it stands right now, we just have one, and it's going to be thousands of years before Westeros, which is even before Westeros was called Westeros. So uh, this is very likely going to be giving us the true origin of the, the Nightwalkers. This is very likely going to be giving us uh, a lot of dragon action, uh, the, how the Targaryens became the powerful family, just so much possibility. The thing that we need to discuss is what exactly do you think is going to happen in this prequel series? Let's get into that conversation down in the comments. Uh, I, my personal opinion is they're going to give us the, the origin tale of the White Walkers and the Targaryens because we're going to see the, the fire and ice effectively. Although we know in, the, in Game of Thrones, the fire and ice is the uh, fire is the Targaryens and the ice is the Starks because that's you know where we're at and you Jon Snow and Khaleesi you know ice fire anyway um, so my my again my personal my personal take on this is it's going to give us the origin of the White Walkers the the origin of dragons possibly though I I feel like they're just going to have them. Like they're more likely just going to have them as key elements, key storytelling elements, um, as well as a lot of history on the Targaryens, uh, which would make sense because we're getting that book from George R.R. R. Martin uh, about the history, basically, of the Targaryens. It's a collection of short stories that we talked about a little while ago. Um, where he's going through the history of the Targaryens. So if we have a video, uh, a, a TV companion for that that kind of clicks in my head does that make sense so what do you guys think let's talk about that down low also george r, r. martin is going to be the showrunner and one of the main writers for the series which the writing part is not really a surprise we kind of anticipate that right but showrunner means he's producing and means he has a lot more control because weiss and whatever the other guy's name is do game of thrones and he just kind of yeah that sounds good checks off on things whereas if he's the actual showrunner he has full control of that ship so it'll be a lot more that, again that just makes sense that he's writing the book with the targaryens and then he's going to do the series with the targaryens that gives us also some lore with the the children of the forest or whatever they're called uh just just all of that makes sense to me but again what do you guys think let's talk about it 
Rounding out this week's TV episode, guys, is DC Universe. The streaming app got kind of an announcement for launch date. It, they're shooting for August. Uh, they haven't given it an actual date. They just say, sometime in August, we're going to be giving you the awesome. Um, but so another thing that we've learned, and this again might not be news to some of you, but will definitely be news to some to many of you, I would imagine. Uh, there's, there's a couple of things. First off, we know they're going to be doing four original series to start because they're all in active production right now. That's Swamp Thing, Young Justice Outsiders, that animated series, uh, Titans, and Doom Patrol. So those four shows are going to launch with at least an episode when it airs, when, when the streaming service launches. But one of the things that they're that is holding back slightly uh, the, 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 the launch date of the streaming service is they're also going to attach old DC animated shows, old DC animated movies, and comics somehow. So they haven't given specifics. They haven't said, well, we're going to be doing Batman the Animated Series. We're going to be doing the, those old Superman cartoons uh, and these... DC uh, animated movies, X, Y, and Z. They haven't specifically said any of that, but they also haven't said how the comic books are going to, to work either. But there are going to be comic books in this streaming service. Is it going to be like a, a, a motion comic or is it going to be like you actually swipe through and read, the, I don't know, but it's really exciting either way, right? So. Sometime in August, hopefully, crossing our fingers, we're going to be getting the DC Universe streaming app. And with all of that new information, I feel like this is legitimately a streaming service that's worth paying for. Instead of just getting your buddy's Netflix account and your boss's uh, Amazon Prime account to, to pirate through, well, pirate, to borrow. There you go. That's a better, more appropriate word, right? Instead of doing that... I honestly feel like the DC Universe streaming app is worth paying for it out of your own pocket. But that's just me. What do you guys think? Let's talk about it in those comments down low. But that's killing this week's TV episode, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, there is a website generallynerdy.net. Go check it out. Go find all the freebies, all the social medias, and the nerdy swag up on generallynerdy.net. Or if you want to just give me money to get a couple, a little bit more content instead of stuff, then jump over to Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. There is a bunch more content up there. So check it out. You can sign on for just a dollar a month and you get a lot more than many, many other places give you for that dollar. So check it out again, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you are new to the channel though, click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. Right above it, there's other things on the channel, photography, food, whatever. Check it out. But before you do, always always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.